That hit music even sounds outer spacey, doesn't it? Do you hear that? That whistling sound? Yeah. Woo! Your... Yeah, it sounds like, uh, you know, outer space type music. In the annals of space exploration, there are moments that defy explanation and challenges that test our understanding. Decades ago, during the Apollo 10 mission, NASA captured something truly baffling, something that defied logic, rattled the crew, and ignited speculation across the globe. But now, we unveil the classified audio tape, one that captures the chilling moments when Apollo 10 astronauts encountered a series of baffling transmissions while orbiting the moon. Who or what could have transmitted these enigmatic signals? Was this a mere technical glitch or an encounter with the unknown? Join us on an enthralling journey as we decipher the cryptic transmissions from the moon in NASA's declassified Apollo 10 tape. A few months before Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin embarked on their historic journey to the moon in July 1969, there was something unusual happening. During that time, NASA's brave astronauts Tom Stafford, Gene Cernan, and John Young found themselves in a unique situation, creating a lesser-known but captivating piece of history. While the world was focused on the upcoming moon landing, these courageous individuals were orbiting the moon in a spacecraft called Apollo 10. It was the year 1969, and in May, Apollo 10, the fourth manned mission in NASA's Apollo program, was launched. This mission was designed to take humanity to the moon and beyond. It marked a significant moment, only the second time humans had circled the moon. The spacecraft, a small silvery object, moved gracefully around the moon's mysterious surface. The astronauts weren't just passengers on this cosmic journey, they were pioneers pushing the boundaries of human potential. Apollo 10 had a critical objective, to meticulously practice and refine every intricate detail that would eventually lead to the historic Apollo 11 moon landing. It was a rehearsal on a cosmic scale, a meticulously choreographed performance of procedures and technology. Yet, amidst the seriousness of their task, a touch of playfulness emerged. The call signs used for Apollo 10 were not just plain identifiers, they were affectionate references to the beloved Peanuts comic strip characters, Charlie Brown and Snoopy. The vast expanse of space resonated with the names of these cherished characters. This light-hearted addition brought a sense of familiarity to the unknown realm of space. During those solitary moments while orbiting the moon, Stafford, Cernan, and Young were accompanied not only by the sounds of spacecraft instruments, but also by the essence of Charlie Brown and Snoopy. And so, a few months before Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin's indelible steps on the lunar surface, Apollo 10 quietly but significantly made its mark. The astronauts' journey around the moon was more than a mere test. It was a symphony of dedication and innovation. In the backdrop of a strange place, the moon and the mysteries it held, a touch of the whimsical, a strange noise, if you will, emerged in the form of those unmistakable call signs. Charlie Brown and Snoopy, cosmic companions in the odyssey of exploration. Roughly 102 hours and 12 minutes after leaving Earth, the crew of Apollo 10 found themselves in a unique situation. They were on the far side of the moon, beyond the reach of communication with our planet. While circling the moon, they performed a significant experiment. They practiced simulating a liftoff from the moon's surface. This test was meant to prepare for the upcoming Apollo 11 mission, which aimed to achieve a historic moon landing. The crew consisted of three brave astronauts, John Young, who was responsible for navigating the spacecraft around the moon, and Thomas Stafford and Gene Cernan, who were in the Apollo lunar module trailing behind. As their spacecraft moved deeper into the moon's shadow, an unexpected event occurred. They lost radio contact with Earth, leaving them in silence for almost an hour. During their flight tasks and while having a snack, something very strange occurred. The astronauts began hearing what seemed like celestial melodies through their headsets, a strange symphony from space. Gene Cernan was the first to react, saying, Boy, that's some strange music. John Young agreed, adding, We should investigate this. Nobody will believe us. The sounds were so unusual that they left the crew puzzled and captivated. However, a dilemma arose. The crew debated whether to share this odd musical experience with their NASA superiors. They worried about not being taken seriously and feared that their chances of participating in future space missions might be affected. 
The idea of encountering peculiar and unexplained events wasn't new to the Apollo program. In fact, such incidents had happened frequently enough that the astronauts had a term for it, lie to fly. This phrase summarized their approach of not reporting such events to avoid being disqualified from future space missions. 50 years later, the source of these mysterious sounds remains unsolved. Space, a vast and mysterious realm, is known for producing strange noises that puzzle scientists and astronauts alike. These cosmic melodies, resembling music, have been experienced on various missions, extending beyond the Apollo 10 mission in 1979. In 1979, while the Voyager spacecraft was on its captivating journey towards Jupiter, it encountered an intriguing occurrence. This phenomenon bore a striking resemblance to a puzzling sound experience that had earlier perplexed the Apollo 10 astronauts during their graceful orbit around the moon. Fast forwarding to the year 2002, the Cassini spacecraft, during its remarkable expedition, intercepted baffling transmissions originating from Saturn, the magnificent planet adorned with rings. However, let's not let our imaginations run too wild. In the case of Cassini's encounter with Saturn, there existed a more straightforward explanation rooted in the realm of science. This is where it gets fascinating. When charged particles carrying cosmic energy travel through the core of a planet, their mere presence distorts the planet's magnetic environment. This distortion, in turn, creates a unique symphony of peculiar sounds that resonate throughout the surrounding space. But here's where the mystery deepens. Let's shift our attention to our closest cosmic neighbor, the Moon. Unlike planets like Saturn, the Moon doesn't possess a magnetic field. Furthermore, its surface lacks the breathable air that envelops our Earth. These intriguing facts give rise to a question. If the Moon lacks a magnetic field and an atmosphere, then where do the perplexing sounds that Apollo 10's radio captured actually come from? The Moon, a tranquil and barren world, seems unlikely to be the source of these enigmatic melodies. It lacks the necessary elements to compose such celestial tunes. As a result, the origin of these space-themed harmonies continues to bewilder the scientific community. This enduring curiosity persists, much like a twinkling star in the night sky. Initially, NASA chose to keep this peculiar lunar sound a secret. They labeled it as classified, resembling a confidential dossier in a detective tale. Fast forward to 2008, when NASA eventually unveiled the mission's transcript. However, the actual recording of this otherworldly sound remained under lock and key, awaiting its chance to be heard. Then, in 2012, the grand revelation unfolded. Those enigmatic audio files, capturing the moon's melodic interlude, were set free in the expansive realm of the Internet. People around the globe could finally partake in what the Apollo 10 crew had experienced. The narrative, however, didn't conclude there. The online world teemed with curiosity and awe, especially across social media platforms. Individuals shared and discussed this lunar melody like never before, akin to a universal jam session. The plot took an even more intriguing turn with the emergence of a television show titled NASA's Unexplained Files. The show delved deep into this cosmic concert and the theories surrounding it. Imagine a group of cosmic detectives unraveling the mystery of these space tunes. One notion they pondered was that the music might have resulted from interference by bothersome radio signals tangled amidst the cosmic frequencies. Picture trying to enjoy your cherished tune while someone converses on a walkie-talkie nearby. Clarity would surely be compromised. As the intrepid Apollo 10 crew embarked on their mission, they not only encountered the enigmas of space, but also stumbled upon a perplexing puzzle. While traversing the cosmos, their headsets filled with a strange melody that both fascinated and unsettled them. This celestial melody enveloped them, sparking their curiosity. Despite the captivating notes, they remained steadfast in their duties, diligently capturing intricate images of the moon's rugged surface. Amidst the haunting harmonies, the astronauts meticulously photographed the lunar craters. They assiduously adjusted their flight trajectory, preparing for the moment of resuming communication with Houston. Amid their lunar responsibilities, an unexpected appetite emerged. The astronauts humorously mentioned their yearning for a post-mission snack. Astronaut Young, a considerate team member, aimed to uncover the enigma behind the Celestial Symphony. He suggested that the unusual sound might have arisen from the interaction of radio waves between the two spacecraft. 
This mission was groundbreaking as it involved two spacecraft equipped with their own radio communication systems. The proximity of these systems could have led to interference, similar to the static when a cell phone disrupts a speaker. Intriguingly, NASA's subsequent explanation supported Young's insightful hypothesis. The radios on both the command and lunar modules being so close were indeed susceptible to interfering with each other. The scientific rationale aligns with the peculiar sound the astronauts encountered, a harmonious fusion of cosmic vibrations and terrestrial technology. Thus, as they ventured through lunar landscapes, the astronauts not only captured the moon's rugged beauty, but also added a melodious enigma to their space odyssey. Yet, there's a captivating twist to this narrative that ignites the imagination. Consider Al Warden, the astronaut from Apollo 15, who stands in defiance of the prevalent radio theory. He remains unconvinced, boldly stating, Logic tells me that if there was something recorded on there, then there was something there. It's as if he peers into the unknown, daring to challenge established wisdom. Then there's the iconic trio of Michael Collins, Neil Armstrong, and Buzz Aldrin pioneers of Apollo 11, the historic lunar mission. Amid their triumphant journey, they too experienced a weird symphony echoing across space's expanse. Collins candidly recounts their otherworldly encounter in his memoir, Carrying the Fire and Astronaut's Journeys. As they ventured away from Earth, an otherworldly melody brushed against their ears. This wasn't an isolated event. They were forewarned. NASA's meticulous radio engineers had advised them beforehand, attributing the strange whistling sounds to radio system interference between the lunar and command modules. Picture the astronauts encased in their spacecraft's metallic shell amid the emptiness of space, hearing a haunting tune defying explanation. Collins acknowledges the disconcerting impact of these sounds, admitting, had I not been warned about it, it would have scared the hell out of me. This response is human, a glimpse into the vulnerability that even the most intrepid explorers can experience when confronting the enigmatic. As they explored the moon's hidden side, a place where direct communication with Earth was impossible, their radios fell silent, enveloping them in solitude. In this mysterious lunar isolation, they began hearing strange sounds. It was an enigmatic symphony resonating through the vastness, like deciphering whispers in a dimly lit room. These astronauts were truly alone, with Earth out of sight and earshot. Yet, what's even more captivating is the ensuing silence. Upon returning, they didn't publicly share these eerie encounters. Not one of the three astronauts disclosed the peculiar noises they heard, not even to the engineers who designed their spacecraft. It's a puzzle, a secret within space's vastness. Journalist Sean O'Kane, who immersed himself in science and space exploration, speculated about the astronauts' silence, attributing it to a fear of displaying vulnerability. Imagine being in their shoes. Projecting strength and stability was crucial. Any hint of uncertainty could have ended their careers. O'Kane proposed that many of these spacefarers and daring test pilots adhered to the adage, lie to fly. They maintained unwavering confidence, knowing that any crack in their facade could ground them permanently. It's fascinating to realize that, despite all the training and readiness for space travel, it's the smallest things that can weigh the most on someone's mind. Even with the best technology and knowledge, astronauts were still affected by the faintest sounds of the universe. This reminds us that the human mind is as vast as the universe itself. This remarkable mission was a pivotal lunar expedition that paved the path for the historic Apollo 11. The astronauts aboard were eager to do more than just fly around. They wanted to practice and improve their skills for the crucial Apollo 11 mission. Their dedication was astonishing. They practiced every move, every action that would mirror the next mission. Their thorough preparations were so exceptional that even their fuel levels played a role. These explorers deliberately kept less fuel, a strategic choice to avoid the urge for an unplanned moon landing. It's like having a tempting dessert in front of you, but only taking a small bite to save space for the main dish. Apollo 10 was more than just practice. It set records that would echo in history. During their return to Earth, they reached a remarkable height, 220,820 nautical miles above the planet's surface, higher than any other humans had ever been. The astronauts rested after bidding farewell to the part of the lunar lander that launched them, marking the start of their lunar adventure. They became space photographers, capturing captivating images of the moon's surface from their spaceship's elevated position. 
Imagine looking down and spotting 18 distinct features on the lunar landscape. These were significant landmarks that had never been seen up close before. Armed with cameras, they documented various intriguing elements on the moon. Yet, their exploration was both demanding and challenging. Their dedicated work led to exhaustion, causing them to cancel two planned TV broadcasts. Their fatigue was genuine, and they required extra rest. Departing the moon's orbit involved a powerful engine ignition lasting about two and a half minutes, altering their course towards Earth. This precise maneuver occurred at 137 hours, 39 minutes, and 13.7 seconds into their mission. As the spaceship left the moon, the astronauts likely experienced an awe-inspiring journey. They had orbited the moon for over two days, circling it 31 times. Consider the breathtaking sights they witnessed during those 61 hours and 37 minutes. The journey home wasn't just a passive ride. Alongside gazing at the scenery, they skillfully identified where the stars met Earth's horizon, using a celestial compass of sorts. Their involvement didn't end there. They aimed to showcase spaceship life to Earthlings, recording six TV broadcasts that provided glimpses of their journey from within. Now, onto a fascinating aspect, shaving. Imagine using an everyday razor and thick shaving gel in space, where gravity isn't assisting. The astronauts undertook this experiment to prove the feasibility of safe shaving in space, displaying their resourcefulness in unique conditions. As the spaceship approached Earth on the final day of the mission, the Apollo 10 team sped through space faster than any humans before. Imagine them racing along at a mind-boggling 39,897 kilometers per hour, resembling a comet streaking through the night sky. This high-speed journey was made possible by their carefully planned route, reducing the usual 56-hour return trip to just 42 hours, giving them an advantage in the cosmic race. But speed wasn't their only achievement. They traveled farther away from their Houston base than anyone ever had. They journeyed an astonishing 408,950 kilometers, equivalent to circling the Earth over 10 times. Despite Apollo 13's crew going slightly farther from Earth, these space travelers held the record for venturing the most distant from their home planet. Most Apollo missions elegantly orbited the moon from about 111 kilometers above its surface. However, there's an interesting twist. The distance between Earth and the moon isn't fixed. It varies by about 43,000 kilometers between its closest and farthest points during each lunar month. Additionally, Earth's rotation adds another layer, causing the distance to Houston to change by an extra 11,000 kilometers daily. It's like a cosmic dance of celestial partners. At a precise moment, 191 hours, 33 minutes, and 26 seconds into their journey, the command module separated from the service module, getting ready for their descent. Imagine the scene. A sleek capsule parting ways with the rest of the ship, a solitary traveler beginning its fiery journey back to our planet. This fiery re-entry occurred 15 minutes later, a stunning performance of fire and heat shielding against the harsh atmosphere. With racing hearts, a call. Not just any call, but from none other than President Richard Nixon himself. Amid the ocean's motion, they heard Nixon's voice, congratulating them on a journey that captured the world's imagination. Unlike their colleagues who walked on the moon's surface, these pioneers didn't face quarantine measures. Since they hadn't touched the lunar surface, the worry of space germs was non-existent. They were taken to Pago Pago International Airport in Tafuna, welcomed as heroes by a cheering crowd. A C-141 cargo plane was ready to transport them back to Ellington Air Force Base near Houston. And so, with the cheers of the planet resonating and the moon's mysteries imprinted in their minds, the Apollo 10 crew returned. They carried not only records, but also stories that would inspire generations to aim for the stars. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.